Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Murray Field at Dakota Collegiate. It just sounds so good to say that. We are gathered on Treaty 1 land on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Thank you all for coming here today. It is fabulous to see so many faces, not only staff and members of the superintendent's team from the Louis Riel School Division, all the friends, family, community members, corporate and public supporters. Thank you so much for being part of this very special day. My name is Eva Kovacs and I'm from Global News and I'm a graduate of Dakota Collegiate. After having, <laughs> is there an applause? Thank you. <laughs> I'm very proud of that fact. I have the jacket to prove it. After having the pleasure of emceeing several of the fundraising dinners to help bring this dream here to life, it is really a thrill to be part of today and the official opening of this incredible athletic field that we're all standing on. It almost feels like you want to take your shoes off and just feel what it feels like in bare feet. It is just so lush and beautiful. What you see here today as you look around Murray Field is the result of not just a vision, all the other critical elements needed to get this day to happen. You need a game plan, you need commitment, you need teamwork, and lots and lots of support. Next week, the very first home game will be played here by the Dakota football team. Go Lancers! Still the work isn't quite complete. Equipment is still on hand to finish up the infield. Lights will be ready here in late October. The basketball court that's just taken shape behind you and will get its new playing surface installed next spring. And bleachers, as I'm sure you've noticed when you walked out here, they're lacking. They'll be here next year. Today, before we officially open Murray Field, I'd like to invite a few people to share some words as we celebrate this occasion. Of course, we don't have spectator stands yet, so we're going to keep things as brief as possible. First, please welcome Brian Mays, Winnipeg City Councillor for St. Vital. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Eva. As brief as possible means, in this case, maybe not as brief as some people would like. This has been a, this has been quite a long uh, journey, so I do want to thank a number of people. Um, you often hear politicians say, you know, I'm thrilled to be as he had on Twitter. I'm thrilled to be at this grade eight graduation, and you kind of go, oh, I don't know, are they? In? But trust me, I am thrilled to be here today. I am really thrilled to be here today to be part of this opening, and uh, my sons are here with me. My assistant, Krista, is here, who is a uh, Glen Long grad, but that's all right. She agreed to dress all in black and yellow today for the event, so thank you for that. Um, the number of people I want to, to thank, and I'm sure others will do, but uh, the school board, Dwayne Brothers, Brad Fulton, the trustees, my classmate, Chris Sigurdsson, who is the chair of the board, unfortunately, is traveling. But I'm traveling next Thursday, so he's going to be here for the football opener. So I thought we covered that off well. Uh, Nancy Allen, former MLA, who is a huge part of getting funding going for this and getting that momentum. Nancy is here. Uh, I also want to thank in particular Rick Watts and Wayne Ruff who are a huge part of this. Dale Dreger um, and especially and the print starts get bigger after that and Boulder and uh, Mr. Murray of course will be speaking after me. Very generous donation to make this possible when it looked like we were going to have to have a smaller much more modest version of this project. Uh, and But really three people who, who have been and I apologize if I missed anyone, but I don't want to be here all night, but three people who have been instrumental in this are uh, Jill Mathe, the principal, and and in particular, uh, Dean Favoni and Robbie Major. And I'll, I'll get too emotional if I talk too much about, about what they've done, and they're up later on. I just, by way of analogy, I happened to be in Ottawa the day Shelley Glover, the former MP, was named to the cabinet, and she was quite serious, and then she suddenly said to me, not bad for a punk from Windsor Park. And so I thought, not bad for a math teacher and a vice principal to have uh, <laughs> over a million dollar uh, complex here. Um, and on a personal note, I'm, uh, I'm a graduate here from the uh, class of 1980, and I'm very proud of that, as Eva is proud of being graduate. My fellow Lancer, Councillor Mike Pagetkan, is here, class of 88. He never mentions he's younger than me, so I have to do it. So, Mike, wonderful to have you here. And uh, honorary Lancer Janice Lukes, who's the counselor for part of St. Vital. I have most of it, Janice. Uh, the city has, has stepped up here and stayed with the project. Uh, 
and I really couldn't have done it. It certainly wasn't all me. It was my colleagues. It was the mayor and the support of the people who voted for the budgets. It, I think it was spread over three different budgets. Um, you may ask how much. Uh, I took it as great validation that about a week ago, Dan Vandell, who is now an MP, who was kind of my mentor at City Hall, Dan Vandell said to one of my sons, how did your dad get a million bucks out of the city for a high school athletic complex? How did, how did that happen? And I said, it was actually 1.2 million, which is the way you do when you're a politician. So we are very proud as, as councillors to back to the cricket, uh, cricket softball batting cage, the, the basketball court, and we'll be back on October 7th for that. And of course, Murray Field. Uh, and, and Murray family and other private donors have really helped make this possible. So. Um, by way of conclusion, and I'm sure you'll be glad to hear that, Eva, um, I do think I, I've been running by here all summer because it, it always made me feel good to come and see the progress. And I think this is certainly one of the major accomplishments of, of what I'll have done as a councillor when I'm finished. I'm very proud to begin been with this from the beginning, which was seems like three or four years ago with Robbie and Dean. So very proud to have been, been part of this. And I guess in a way, People might say, well, it doesn't matter. And, and I've been door knocking in the neighborhood this summer, and to people around here, this matters. People know it. People were very pleased that this was going ahead. After all these years of never having a home game, this, you know, this neighborhood will now start to have home games. And it, it matters in that, you know, I was, uh, I was a high school runner, and uh, we won the provincials, which I've mentioned a few times. And, you know, the, when I came back after 20 or 30 years, the first thing I did was look up at that wall in the gym to make sure that the team I had been on had its place up on the wall. It matters. It develops your character. It develops who you are, I think, to be part of the athletic program anywhere and to be part of team sports. So I'm very pleased to help. I think my generation was very well served, and I'm glad to see that we've been able to, to do something for the next generation. And uh, with that, I'll thank you and uh, turn it over to Eva. Thank you. Our next guest's name is now forever tied to this great space, as Brian had referenced. Please welcome Dan Murray, president of Murray Auto Group and principal funder of Murray Field. Thank you, Eva, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm curious as to how many people that are standing here today really believe that a year ago we would be standing here on this beautiful field. The work, the works that, I don't think many people believe that. The work that's been done by Dean Favoni, Robbie Major, Jill Mathe, Dwayne Brothers, Dale Dreger, the Alumni Association of Dakota Collegiate, all the generous donors and countless others deserves just recognition. Without you, this project would never have gotten to where it is today. Also, to the City of Winnipeg, and the Louis Riel School Division, congratulations for the support that you've shown for this. To all of you, your leadership, your enthusiasm, your hard work, and your never quit attitude is greatly admired and crucial to the success of this project. Murray Chevrolet and the Murray family, we have a long history of supporting amateur athletics in Winnipeg. And we're pleased to support athletics at such an important age. There are many life lessons to be learned friendships formed, and character developed from playing sports. This school has a great sports reputation, and to me it deserves this first class facility. It will be fantastic for the students, not just the athletes, but the students too, the coaches, the families, and the community. We love the city of Winnipeg, and we're very pleased to support, to show our support of our community. This support would not be possible if it weren't for my family, that are here with me today, my incredible staff, the entire Murray Auto Group, and most importantly, our valued customers. Today, as we look out onto this field, onto this amazing sports field, we're witnessing a dream that has become a reality. Congratulations to everybody, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. Thank you. On behalf of the Louis Riel School Division Board of Trustees, help me welcome Sandy Nemeth, Vice Chair. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, the Louis Riel School Division, we spend an awful lot of time talking about changing worlds, and we think about the worlds of our students, primarily 
but also about our staff and our greater community. And Murray Field is absolutely going to change worlds and in so many wonderful ways. This is such a great victory. And it's been achieved not by any single individual, but through many players who've coordinated and synchronized their efforts together as a team. And I think that's a good metaphor for this celebration this afternoon. On behalf of the Louis Riel School Board and some of my trustee colleagues are here today, Tom Parker, Josie Landry, Louise Johnston, Robert Page, and Hugh Coburn. I want to extend from the bottom of our hearts, thank you to the Murray family, to the Klish family, to Dale, Dre Dale Dreger, Wade Miller, and Pinnacle, to Brian Mays in the city of Winnipeg, to Qualico, to Robbie, Dean, and Jill, to Dwayne and to Brad, and to everyone and anyone whose blood, sweat, and maybe even some tears along the way have brought us to this moment. Your generous financial contributions, your gifts of your time and talent, and most importantly, your unwavering vision will immeasurably and positively impact our students and our greater community. And for that, I'm very thankful. So from the Louis Ruhel School Board to all of you, a very warm and a very sincere thank you. And to you, of course, Eva, for journeying with us too. <laughs> It's been a great journey. We uh, Global News partnered up with uh, Dakota Collegiate, I guess, about three years ago, maybe four years ago, and started emceeing the galas. And it's been really nice to uh, not only track the development and the, the progress, but of course to be here today. So it really is an honor. Next, I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Dwayne Brother, Superintendent of the Lower Yale School Division, to share a few words. It's tough to be the third or fourth speaker. Uh, a lot of what I have to say is it can be exactly mirroring exactly what uh, other people have said. But people here who are here today need to hear uh, what I need to say. I am absolutely ecstatic for the staff and the students of Dakota uh, and the surrounding community to be able to have this facility. This is absolutely tremendous for all of you. A year ago, uh, you know, there's other people who have been strongly involved with this project, and I wasn't. I kind of got bored about a year ago. I didn't think we could pull this off. Didn't. Didn't have a hot clue. But the work that people have done to bring this about is absolutely amazing. And I need to acknowledge some people, and you've heard these names before already, but I need to acknowledge Jenny Mutkliff, who's here, who helped us with some fundraising. Rick Watts, an alumni uh, here at Dakota, a tremendous basketball player. Uh, he's got a son who's playing here at Dakota, did a lot of heavy lifting. Wayne Ruff, uh, former principal here, school trustee, community organizer. Charlie Robert, our director of facilities. Irene Nordheim, our assistant superintendent who's been strongly involved. Brad Fulton, our secretary treasurer. Bruce Dixon, where's Bruce? Can you put your hand up? Right key architect in putting this project together. Uh, general contractor, Bo Worthers. Where's Bo? Right there. This is your work that's here, and it's, it's phenomenal. You gotta remember, folks, that uh, we finally signed the papers back in June to make this project come together. And this project came together in roughly three months' time. It is unbelievable. To our donors, Countless members of the Dakota Alumni Group who have been coming together for the last five years. And I can't list all of their names. Myron and Marion Klish, there's Myron, right there. Uh, Qualico, we have Qualico representatives here. Dale Dreger, who I've gotten to know very well in the last couple of months, and Wade Miller from Pinnacle. Your, your support has been absolutely phenomenal. Councillor Brian Mays, how you pulled this off, I have no idea. Together with Mike Pagdekan and others, this is unbelievable as an alumni and as a supporter to this community is incredible. And finally, to Dan and Kelly Murray, your family and the automotive group. I had a chance to pop into your dealership uh, about a month ago and I had a couple people recognize me from the media and they said that they're getting lots of people coming into your store and saying we're buying our vehicles from you because of the support that you're providing to this field, to the Murray field. So thank you so incredibly much. Finally, and you've heard it already, the vision. And I know there's many more people, but these three people over here, Dean Favoni, Robbie Major, Jill Mathe, and others, this was your dream. 
This was your dream. And look around what you're creating, not only for now and not only for these football players, but for many decades to come for this community. Finally, to members of the Louis Rell School Division Board for being brave. Because this is a new venture. This is a public-private partnership. This is new in the province of Manitoba. And the trustees of Manitoba, of, of our, the Real School Division, had to be brave to be able to say, no, we're going to do this and make this happen because it's the right thing to do for our community. So to everybody, let's enjoy this. To the students, enjoy. And to everybody, thank you very much. Next, I'd like to invite Jill Mathay, Principal of Dakota Collegiate, to say a few words. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Your support has been overwhelming and continues to be overwhelming. And there are so many people here today who have played such an important role in ensuring that one day we would be standing and doing exactly this. Thank you so much. To our community members and business owners, including our parents who have donated monies and gifts along this journey, thank you. To our local politicians who have advocated for us since day one, we thank you. To our alumni who have given of your time, your money, expertise, we thank you. To our colleagues who I'm sure were sick of hearing about the field at Dakota, thank you to, for continuing to, to pretend that you were even listening. Thank you. To our senior administrators, especially Irene Nordheim, we thank you for being patient with us every time you walked into our school and we verbally harangued you and there goes the mic. <laughs> Sound? It's okay, I can holler it out. That might be a good thing. To our LRSD school board who have taken a huge leap of faith and have supported us throughout this endeavor, please know that your resolve to see this project through has meant the world to this school and this community. We thank you. To Superintendent Dr. Brothers, your unwavering support has been greatly appreciated and as I've said before I know there are many times you will hope that we would just go away but you didn't and you were there when we needed you the most thank you so much to the employees we have many of them over here standing here watching this ceremony of HTFC field turf perfect turf and Shelmerdine you have created a masterpiece. We have watched you every day, all 1,300 of us up in those windows. Your passion, your attention to detail. <laughs> and the pride you all have is evident in your work and has been an inspiration for all of us. Every day we hear someone say up in those windows, I cannot believe how hard those guys work. You have been a pleasure to partner with. Thank you. A special mention right now to Robbie Major and Dean Favoni for championing this great feat. You both epitomize the notion of being a Lancer for life. We are so lucky to have you on our team. I have watched you guys cry together. I have watched you laugh together. But most importantly, you stuck together and modeled that nothing gets done with an without an incredible amount of hard work and you kept your eyes on the prize. We are so grateful to have you in Lancer Nation and you should be very, very proud of your work. Last but certainly not least to our students, all of you, our teachers who are, I see them dispersed out here, and all of our other staff, both current and our former ones are here as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience and your relentless support. This is outside the realm of just the curriculum. Together, we make a remarkable community. A community where diversity means more than where you come from, what you look like, what language you speak, or who you love. A community where how you think, 
What you believe and who you want to be is valued and encouraged. Combine this with the notion, with the ideals of sport, and it can't help but be a winning combination. Sport instills character, resilience, and the value of teamwork, skills that we know serve us all well in every aspect of learning and in life. There is no doubt the investment in this field by the many people here today will re reap great rewards for both now and in the future and many, many years to come. In closing, this Murray Field will continue to build on and enhance an already outstanding athletic program at an outstanding school. It will be a source of pride for all of us around this community and everywhere else in the city of Winnipeg and it is because of every single one of you here today. Thank you so much and let the games begin. Awesome. <laughs> On top of the regular responsibilities here at Dakota Collegiate, these two gentlemen carved out time to ensure Murray Field didn't just sit idle as simply an idea. They worked hard to make sure that it came to be. Help me welcome Robbie Major, Vice Principal of Dakota, Dean Favoni, Teacher Leader for Mathematics at DCI. We have been asked several times in the past few weeks if we're excited. They're laying the turf right now. Are you guys excited? They're putting in the lines and logos. Are you excited yet? They're putting, in, uh, putting up the uprights. Are you excited? The short answer is yes, of course we're excited. But to be honest, we've been excited for the past five years. After four gala, four gala dinners, several presentations to the board, hundreds and hundreds of phone calls and meetings, excited might be a bit of an understatement. To be standing on a turf field today is surreal. There has been more than one occasion where we thought this might never happen. So yes, we're excited. The entire process started about five years ago as I left a Manitoba Marathon meeting and was stopped by fellow Marathon volunteer and Dakota grad Les Weens. He was key in the early stages of starting the galas and conceptualizing this vision. But in some ways, the start can be traced back to January of 2008 when Dakota parent and former Blue Bomber Dave Van Conant made several presentations to the board outlining the benefits of a high school football team and what it would bring to LRSD and ultimately to Dakota. That team, having this team, played no small part in the eventual decision to build the field. His work should be commended today as well. It's flattering for us to be thanked, but Robbie and I also have some thank yous. Our first gala came and went and we thought it was very successful. A nice public awareness campaign and we raised a little bit of money. Days after it ended, we received a phone call from a Dakota alumnus saying he was impressed with what we were doing and that he was going to come by the school and drop off a check for an amount that both surprised us and humbled us. Even today, he chooses to remain anonymous, but we are forever grateful for his belief in the project on that first day. Today, we hope to meet this man face to face for the first time. Dale Dreger, Wade Miller and Pinnacle have their names on several projects throughout the city. They are a company leading by example. The, su the surprising thing about Dale and Pinnacle is not that they donated to our project, but that Pinnacle does as well as it does considering the amount of time Dale spends away from the office. <laughs> and here at Dakota helping coach the football team. He's here every day for football academy and every day for football practice. It actually gives me relief to know that a group of people can work efficiently and independently with their leader away, considering the number of times I left my classroom full of kids to take field-related phone calls or go to the office to discuss something with Robbie, sometimes for a length of time that would have made most principals significantly uncomfortable. <laughs> Myron and Mary Inklish and their family have been good friends of mine in the school for years. Our children are friends, and I am forever grateful for their friendship, their donation, their generosity and humility. More communities would be better off if people took their actions as examples. Last summer, what was largely a three-person endeavor turned into, into five. We were joined by Dakota alumnus Rick Watts and retired Dakota principal Wayne Ruff. Rick, the MHSAA athlete of the half century, is a true Lancer for life. Not only is he credited with coining that phrase, but he has, he has donated to the school for years and was, is the driving force behind the homecoming game on October 5th. He's a tireless volunteer. 
He shared with me a couple of years ago that it was not until many years after his own high school graduation that he realized the impact his school and teachers had on his life. If more schools had alumni who cared about their school like Rick, we would have many more sports programs flourishing throughout the city. Wayne Ruff, the man who hired me 27 years ago, is as community-minded as a person I know. For years he, had, he has had the pulse of St. Patel. His fingerprints are all over the city. Whether it be through teaching, principalship, serving as trustee, athletic contributions, re-elevate and now Murray Field. His connections were invaluable. Aside from this, he should be congratulated for his induction to the Manitoba Basketball Hall of Fame as a builder. I'll clarify builder, not athlete. He was an innovator as an administrator, and that spirit remains with him today. I heard recently that people go into politics for a variety of reasons. Some do it for fame, for notoriety, for prestige, for name recognition, or using it as a stepping stone for another political appointment. But the good ones do it to enhance their community, to make the lives of their constituents better. Brian Mays is one of these politicians. He's been a true champion of this project and a believer in us from the start. His initial contribution gave us real legitimacy and this gave us leverage to secure further funding. His further donation on behalf of the City of Winnipeg spurred the project to completion. His impact can't be understated. Thank you, Brian. Our city has many successful and financially well-off people who work in well-established businesses. It is the special ones who use the success to better improve the conditions of others. Dan Murray and his family have done just that. I'm good yet. <laughs> From our very first meeting, it was ever evident that Dan is thoughtful, introspective, reflective, and is a caring man. He asked us questions that no one else did. He asked ab about our students. He showed a real interest in this community. At a time when we thought this dream was dead, Dan came on board and saved it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Kelly. I have two more pages here. <laughs> to use a football analogy, here we'll get to some sports. This project started on the 10 yard line, maybe perhaps deeper in our end. But little by little, we saw some progress and we eventually pushed the ball into the red zone. Along the way, we needed advice, guidance on how to strategically proceed. Our principal, Jill Maffey, was there to listen, question, direct, nudge, and most of the times push us. We don't believe that we would be here without her support. She allowed us the flexibility and the freedom to be innovative and pursue our dreams. Not every principal would give this kind of professional leeway. We were granted and dedicate time to the project. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> Similarly, Dr. Brothers gave us the green light to move forward from day one. We're not sure he knew what he was getting into. <laughs> As the project neared the critical stages, he stepped in and used his political acumen and passion for his community of schools and its students to finalize the financial details of the five-year effort. In the 1950s and 60s, this area was a dumping ground for construction of new homes in the area. I don't think it's a stretch to say that we wouldn't be here with Wayne's support he provided and the board, we'd be standing on an empty, worn down grass field. Qualico has a strong presence in St. Patel and many of you will go home tonight and open the doors to a home that was built by Qualico. They have been and continue to be leaders in the community. They have contributed significantly to this project and many others around Winnipeg. Thank you, Qualico.
Bruce Dixon and HDFC, our lead architects, considering the length of this project and the number of revisions we went through, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise us if on your call display Dakota came, Collegiate came up and you didn't pick up from here on forward. Bruce, Eileen, and Monica have been so terrific to work with and partner on with this project over the years. In many ways, this was a total school effort from the teachers, the admin, clerical, educational assistants, custodians, and everybody. People volunteered to pick up prizes, wrap prizes, cover classes, manage ticket sales, the list goes on and on. I can't thank you enough. We have a great community of people to rely on and will continue to do so. Our founding funders should be applauded without question, but there is no way that this project becomes a re reality without the grassroots su root support of the entire St. Mattel community. Literally hundreds of local people and businesses and organizations supported us from the onset. Galas ranging from 440 to 580 people are not the norm for any charity and certainly not a public high school. The constant media attention, encouragement and support we received is vital. This was undoubtedly a true community effort and you will all be witness to your donations for years and years to come. We do want to recognize one of these groups, Michelle Auger and the Dakota Community Centre will have their official opening next month and their spectacular $20 million facility will add to the healthy living and, and fitness landscape of South Winnipeg. We believe this project is truly unique. The partnerships created between public school and private enterprise is groundbreaking. We wonder who will be next, which public school will be approaching their city council or MLA and the surrounding businesses to source out funds for a new field, a new band room or a new performing arts studio. We hope that this model of funding spur the, uh, spurs others on to work towards improving their own school and community as they strive to serve an ever-changing population full of diversity and promise. We're almost done, I promise. Finally, we need to thank our families. This project has taken us away from home. John! <laughs> has taken us away from home more often than we envisioned when we so cavalierly said, Dean, let's build a field. As we pursued this, our wives and families have listened to our failures, successes, ad nauseum, and we're always grateful for their love and support. Thanks. Before we open the field, uh, just a quick story. Uh, Dean and I are somewhat sports buffs. You wouldn't tell it by looking at me, but uh, I enjoy sports. Um, we were talking about a week ago about the Vancouver Olympics and burying the lucky loony at uh, center ice. So last week, uh, Dean, Jill, and I snuck onto the field while they were laying the turf, and we laid down a Lancer for Life pin at center field. Hopefully this brings good luck to all future Lancer teams. On behalf of all the Dakota staff, students, athletes, and future Lancers for life, we want to thank you for your support, encouraging words, and well wishes over the past five years. And we're very excited to officially open Murrayfield. <laughs> 